Hey guys, welcome to another episode of Techno Blog. My name is Eben Wilkins. And my name is Maurice John. And today we're going to be talking about the Blue Phone and its recent control. So, what big, big scandal in the, um, in the retail world? Phone. Yes. <laughs> Amazon is one of the most powerful players when it comes to online presence and even just retail in general yeah. because they're challenging the brick and mortar stores um, for dominance also and um, they made big news when they decided to pull blue phones off of their site. Yeah. Um, why, well, why you may ask? Well, yes, we get into that. We'll get into that. The thing about blue phones, blue phones, well, if you look, if you go on Amazon right now, you pull up Amazon, you're guaranteed to find a blue phone in the top 10, not, not even top 10, top 5, top five, top five. selling phones on Amazon. Yeah, it is. So that yeah. was huge. Yeah. Um, why? Yeah. So why did they pull it off? Well, first off, all right, so <clears throat> the blue phone, which is spelled BLU. Mm-hmm. It's not from China actually. It's it's a Florida-based company, not a um, Chinese company. I thought initially that it was Chinese or somewhere in Vietnam, Taiwan, somewhere in the regions, but it's actually a U.S. company, which is really surprising to me. Mm-hmm. Okay. Yeah. So yes. So what did um Blue did? Um, Blue actually has a software in it from China. Mm-hmm. That allows that uh, that tracks your information, um, and it actually s- pulls your personal information. Is that correct? Yes. Yeah, your personal information, not your shopping habits or your search habits. It's actually your personal information. Mm-hmm. Um, your car logs, uh, messages, stuff like that. Now, when I saw this article, um, I thought Saint Vincent would be most affected by this because if you go. I'm certain if you ask five people, well, that's it, ten people in town to pull out their phones, somebody's going to have a blue phone in that ten. Um, <coughs> one of the cheapest phones for blue is only 50 US dollars. On Amazon. Which, yeah, exactly, on Amazon, which is very cheap. So the cost of entry is very low to get uh, a blue phone. Um, but now that this has come to the forefront, it shed a light on some practices that these companies are, are using that we take for granted and it has a larger conversation to be had about privacy and how much are we really giving away about ourselves when we use these devices. Mm-hmm. Yeah, so I think the, 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 is, the blue discussion is somewhat of a small discussion but the privacy discussion is what is the bigger more impactful discussion that we really need to think about and have. And then, indeed, definitely. And it, it's not only blue phones, but I mean, blue phone got caught. Why, why did blue phone? What's the difference between blue phone scenario and what Google does? There's, there's actually no, no difference. But I think that um, the reason why, and this was their <coughs> defense, blues, the blue phones and blues defense is that um, it's in their, in, in their agreement mm-hmm. that they will take your data. No, they're banking on the fact that you don't read these agreements. Which is true. So you just accept them and move on. And I think a lot, the biggest scam that has ever happened in the privacy world is a user agreement. It's the biggest scam ever. I am certain that they pad these things extra long. So you see this long, long list of par- list paragraphs that you don't want to, to read through. And you just press accept. And I think we need to review really and truly how these are presented. They need to be a, 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 like something that a summary, a summarized version that gives the main point, main points of, of these user agreements. Because we're basically sending our lives away and not even reading the lease on our lives, basically. And I think that that adjustment really needs to be made how these things are presented. So people would at least be encouraged to read 
when they are uh, agreeing to, to these things. Yeah. So in the agreement, they outline that they will be um, offloading <clears throat> some of your data to China. Yeah, and, and selling that information. Yes, and I'm guessing that that is to offset the cost of the device manufacturing. Probably. Yeah. So for you to get a cheap phone, you basically have to sell your life and your soul yeah. and everything that goes along with it. <laughs> you don't gotta you don't, you gotta go so far. <laughs> <laughs> yeah. So it, I, boy, mm -hmm. we're uploading these videos on Facebook, and Facebook is also one of these big data orders too. Mm -hmm. Yeah, they hold a lot of data. In fact, I was after you showed me the the blue article. I decided, you know what? Let me take a look and see what Google knows about me. And whoo -hoo -hoo -hoo. <laughs> they know a lot, man. Well, not as much as I thought because, like, I use Windows Phone. Everybody knows that. Mm -hmm. so, but I still depend on a lot of the Google, Google services. services. And the Google so every Google services uh, mines your data. Gmail searches through all of your mails. Google Maps keeps a record of wherever you go. Google Voice keep a record of your voice, voice. and I think they, they usually keep record of the keep record of conversations. If you or they if you say certain words, if you say a keyword, right. the mic activates and they capture exactly. that data. Yeah, um, Google Wallet. Yeah, every, like every, everything, everything. every service for Google, they mine some kind exactly. of information. And one of the most the smartest decisions Google has ever made is Google Chrome. Yeah. Google Chrome is the most used browser in the world right now. Exactly. And, and the amount of information that could pull from you. Exactly. It's yeah. like, you don't have to, you no longer have to type in the Google search bar. Google knows what you want because to Because you're using the browser to yeah. go everywhere you want to mm -hmm. go. So, how, I, I, I'm wondering to myself, and I asked Ibn the question before. The trade-off is data storage is expensive. Servers are expensive and we're getting stuff for free. But is it really worth the cost? And would we, if given the choice, actually pay for some of these services? Yes. Would you pay to use Facebook? Think about it. Would you pay for would use you? Or would you pay to use Google? Would you pay to search? Would you mm -hmm. be willing to do that? And I, I, I <coughs> think that the answer is a resounding no. Yeah. But the cost is not seen or reflected in the short term mm -hmm. when we go and we sign up for these services. But in the long term, when you really look at it, you kind of feel like the trade-off sometimes isn't really worth it in the long grand scheme of things. Yeah. Yeah. Mm -hmm. I, don't, I don't think so. <laughs> Yeah, I won't be paid for Facebook if I have to. I have enough subscriptions on my hands already. But Netflix is enough. <laughs> but that is boy, in that is the thing, eh? Yeah, every, everybody's going subscription base now. I mean, uh -huh. but even with the subscription base, people still want your data. People still yeah, they still mining it. Still mining you like a few years ago. You bought a device and you were in control of the device. It is becoming clear that we are the devices <laughs> we are the devices we are the, the devices that our computers play with our tvs are play with us that we play with them mm -hmm. when you buy a tv today the tv is actually listening to your conversation if you buy a smart tv of course the tv is listening to your conversations the tv is taking pictures of you who is the real owner of the device is it the tv owning you because you're not giving it permission well, you're giving a push, but when you turn it on, I agree. Yeah, exactly. But when it when does... You, when, you, when you buy it, you automatically sign an agreement. Right. So it's... Mm -hmm. you, you are, your, your control over your life is slowly mm -hmm. slipping out. And not to sound morbid, like, oh my gosh, the machines are coming. But the machines are really coming. <laughs> yeah, you, you sound like a friend of um, Elon Musk. Elon Musk. <laughs> I, I agree with Elon Musk. Oh, man. And... If you look at everything... You don't, you don't think he's exaggerating? I do not think he's wow. exaggerating. Okay. Here's why I don't think he's exaggerating. Hold on, let's just talk. Just another topic about it. Don't go to fire to this. I, it all is connected. The greater, the greater conversation about privacy 
links with artificial intelligence. Mm -hmm. And here is why I see that the big, there's a huge discussion that needs to be made about privacy and needs to be made now. Five years ago, before AI was so popular, let's say 10, maybe 10 years, if you were using Facebook, you design a system that a bunch of if statements, if else then, not a very smart system. It just knows how to do um, sequential um, com Ask. computing. Mm -hmm. So you go on Facebook and you like a picture. Now with artificial intelligence now, artificial intelligence could actually see more than you just liking the mm -hmm. picture. See more than just X and O's or Y and Z. Exactly. So it's like you make it inferences, you could say no, okay, based on your like you might prefer this or based on this this is your personality type. No. If there was a robot uprising <laughs> right? And you have all of these data hoarders. Oh, Facebook yeah. is a big AI company. Mm -hmm. Google is a huge AI company. Mm -hmm. Guess who is the biggest hoarders of data in the world? Amazon? No. Facebook and Google. Okay, alright. All right. So Facebook and Google hoarding all the data and they're the biggest AI company in the world. Now doesn't this sound like a Terminator movie to you? <laughs> This is Terminator Part of Five. And who's Skynet? And who's it's Google? Google? It's Google, right? <laughs> Google is Skynet, and Facebook is <clears throat> Facebook is Skynet Junior. <laughs> I'm telling you, where are you going to run? You where you can run because they know everything about you. you know, their practices. It's like the perfect devil. Mm -hmm. You know, like you could not like a picture, but their algorithms are designed to see how long you hover over a picture. So even though you don't like it, they know you're interested. They know you're interested in it. Yeah, that is how far technology has come to mm -hmm. time your inter your interactions, your every interaction based on your scroll wheel. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Ah, and it it, it yes, gets... folks. Facebook knows how long you spend <laughs> watching a post. Yes. <laughs> so that malicious post, somebody posts on and Facebook, you refuse to like you it. You refuse to like it. Facebook knows you really Facebook like it. Facebook knows yeah. that you yeah. actually. <laughs> Hovered over it. <laughs> you might say something. Mm. Oh my! I read an article recently about how much permissions we give Facebook app. Mm -hmm. It could use your mic, use your camera, right? St to storage. Mm -hmm. Now, all that perfect combination. You are scrolling through your news feed, gently going down. You meet a post. You don't like it, you don't interact with it, but you just meet that post. Right? Now, naturally, if I turn on the mic, I turn on your webcam, and I see your interaction, what am I what, what I could determine exactly how you feel about that post, mine that data, and actually without you even interacting physically with that device. Just by all of these things coming together. I could now know how you feel about that. So if you have some dark twisted fantasy and you scroll it and you see somebody post some whatless post on Facebook and you're like, mm, the church knows that I can't like that. <laughs> but Facebook knows. Facebook knows. Facebook knows. Okay? Oh well. <clears throat> yeah, so Okay, so you you gotta be careful what you put out there. Yes, and yes, definitely. Definitely. Right. Yeah. In today's day and age, it is better to buy a notebook and write down your feelings. <laughs> <laughs> write, down, write down your feelings in a notebook and a journal. Mm -hmm. And we're not, we're not talking about the app, okay? Not the app. We're for an actual, sure. actual book. An actual book. Yeah. A diary. Go back to the days of diaries. Yeah. Definitely. Definitely. Mm -hmm. Yeah. Yeah. So, guys, um, thanks for listening. This is another episode of Techno Blurb. My name is Ebel Wilkins. And my name is Maurice John. And I hope we catch you later. Yes, but make sure you sound off in the comments. I would really want us to really have a discussion and really see what we think about these things that are happening in the world of privacy. Yeah. Alright. So, All right. see you in the next episode.